So this is Michael Brenner. You're going to meet him in a little bit. But Michael uh, used to work for the big brand SAP. And when he was working for SAP, he told me this story that uh, he thought this project that he was assigned was going to be easy and fun. But then he said it turned into anything but. Here's what happened. Michael was attending a customer and partner conference in Orlando, Florida, with 20,000 people in attendance when this man, SAP's then new CEO, Bill McDermott, got on stage to deliver his keynote address. Now, most executives, and I'm sure you've experienced this too, most executives give keynotes that resemble the left-hand column, but not Bill. Bill did something that at the time was kind of different and very refreshing. Instead of talking about SAP, he talked about the industry and where technology was going, and all these consumer changes as they related to the customers sitting in the room and their desire for success. And when he got off stage to raucous applause, he turned to his CMO and said, hey, why don't we market that way? All we do is talk about ourselves. Why don't we market like I just spoke? It seems to resonate. And so being a very good big brand CMO, what did that CMO do? He delegated the task to our friend Michael. Now, really consider what's going on here. You cannot get more top-down approval when you work at an organization, right? You have the CEO telling the CMO to tell Michael, a marketing manager, who's going to fix this problem. The first thing he did to solve this problem of why we're not marketing like Bill's speech was he looked at the data for their marketing. Makes sense, right? What's currently happening with our marketing? The second thing Michael did was he found a problem within that data. At the time, nobody visited the SAP website unless they already knew the brand. And then Michael projected that problem as an opportunity to capitalize on. He found that 30,000 times more searches on non-branded keywords occurred every year compared to the branded keywords of SAP. And then finally, he presented his case. We should create helpful content. We should be blogging. We should be educating other people to drive more traffic on those non-branded terms like big data and cloud computing. And all those people who had asked Michael to solve this problem looked him in the eye and said, no, they didn't even care. He was white noise. Nothing can be worse when you're trying to convince people. But what does that mean anyway to convince other people? Well, the dictionary defines it like this, to bring, as by argument, to belief, consent, or a course of action. And I like the idea of an argument there because that's the vehicle to convince somebody. So what is an argument? If that's our vehicle to convince others, what is it? It's a coherent series of reasons, statements, or facts intended to support or establish a point of view. Now, as content marketers today, we over-index on reasons, statements, or facts. But where we struggle most, I think, is the coherent series and the point of view, that first and last line. We struggle to put our reasons and facts in the right series to convince people, and we struggle with getting into the other person's point of view. And in doing so, because we struggle here, we reach, just like Michael, what I call the green smoothie problem, which is when we share our ideas and they don't care. So why green smoothie problem? Well, imagine I made you this bright green smoothie here and you'd never heard of a green smoothie or seen one before. You would have one of two reactions when all I do is hand you that smoothie and say, hey, I made you a green smoothie. Want to drink it? Those two reactions would be, one, you would anchor to preconceived notions, like, oh, they make these grass shots, these wheat germ things at my gym, that'll be gross. Or my kid drinks this really sugary drink, that, that's not for me, no thank you. So you anchor to preconceived notions, or you look for external affirmation. Are there celebrities endorsing this green smoothie? Is there a long line? Can you show me some social proof that I should go ahead and drink this smoothie you gave me? Is there a case study you can show me about the benefits of a green smoothie? And that's a terrible way to convince people to do anything new or better. And what really goes on when we act this way is we create an information disadvantage. We put the other person back on their heels and they're forced to fill in all these blanks that we possess, but they lack. Because this is how we present. But unfortunately, this is how they understand. And that divide, that gap, creates this information disadvantage. They don't know how we got to that idea, and so they're forced to fill it all in. So think of your presentations, your pitches, your conversations with a boss or a colleague as focused more on the information disadvantage, that divide, instead of the idea itself. 
If we did that, I think we might present a little bit differently. We wouldn't say, hey, it's a green smoothie, want to drink it? We might say something like this. Hey, Sally, remember how last week you said you wanted to be healthy? And then you said you believe that all those health drinks out there are pretty gross? Okay, well, here's what I'm thinking. I took some mango, an apple, a banana, some kiwi, some broccoli, and some kale, and I mixed in a little organic protein powder. And then, you know, last summer I went on this tropical island getaway, and, and my bartender kept using coconut oil in my drinks, and it was delicious, so I mixed some of that in too. And then, I don't know if you know this, Sally, but down the hall, we have this blender in the company kitchen. Yeah, so in no time at all, without paying a dime for an extra tool, I was able to actually make this smoothie. And, and by the way, it, it's a green smoothie. Did you want to drink it? Now, by laying out my thinking, you will have two reactions again, but both of them work in my favor. Number one, you would happily drink it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. That's exactly what I could use. I will drink this smoothie. Or you still might disagree. But if you disagree, you're more likely to point to something objective as to why. Hey, you know, I appreciate the effort here. I kind of see where you're coming from, but I really don't like kale. Okay, no problem. Uh, let me go replace it with spinach, or I'll come back with something a little bit different, or we'll just take it out. In other words, by spending more time discussing that information divide, why the idea makes sense, than what the idea actually is, then others never feel like they're at that information disadvantage. Here's the bottom line, everybody. Don't sell your ideas. Sell why your ideas should exist. Don't sell your ideas. Sell why your ideas should exist. Our friend Michael eventually did get his idea approved. And here's how he did it. He said, hey, well, you know, it, the CEO wants us to market like his speech, and we are kind of all on board with that too, right? And why, why is that the case? We, we have this underlying belief behind what we want. And that belief is that SAP is an industry and technology thought leader. Okay, well, if that's the case, here's what I'm thinking. He added not just all these ingredients, he added that little twist. A little delicious coconut oil, which for Michael was an emotional story. He's like, I can tell you that our competitors are going to gain this advantage over us because the buyer has changed and we have not. But some competitors have. In other words, he inserted some fear, some emotion into this story. And then Michael articulated what it would cost, what it would require to come at this idea successfully. And he said, look, I found this source of budget that we could actually use. Down in the company kitchen, there's a blender, so to speak. In other words, at SAP, we're creating all this content that marketing and sales isn't using. Why don't we reallocate that effort and that budget to this new idea and test it out? That's what it will cost. And oh, by the way, here's my idea. We should create helpful content that ranks on search and drives traffic to our website. And finally, people said yes. So how can we communicate like this too? What is our version of Michael's pitch? And how can we avoid our own versions of the green smoothie problem? Well, it all starts by articulating what the other person wants. We then have to articulate what they believe about getting it. For SAP and Michael, it was, well, we believe in being a thought leader. By starting with these two things, you stand shoulder to shoulder with whoever you're pitching. And in doing so, then you can walk every step of the way between where they are and where you want them to be. And where you want them to be is where you're already at, but you can't start there. You can't just share that green smoothie, that idea. You have to start with, here's what they want, I'm acknowledging it, and here's what you believe, you have been heard. I am on the same page as you, and I want to get to the same outcome as you. Now, here's what I'm thinking. And so you're having a more objective conversation instead of me versus you, my idea versus yours. In other words, here's my thinking. I'm exposing it to you and to the team. Let's make it better. In the end, if it feels like their idea as much as ours, they're way more likely to act. But crucially, you also have to add in your differentiation, your little inspired twist, that little coconut oil that makes it delicious. Don't be afraid to pull from something outside the echo chamber, something unexpected. And then, and only then, lay out what it will take. This is when price, budget, team, time, what you're asking of the other person matters. So if you want the thing that they want and you believe that core belief of theirs, then here's what I would suggest for you, for us, for our content marketing. It's a green smoothie. Want to drink it? Okay, I have to acknowledge something here. While I know this might make sense logically, I hope it does. It does feel like a lot of work. 
because it's not how we normally communicate. We normally communicate us first, inside out. What we're, what we're really doing here is reversing that. We're going outside in, them back to us. But that's the only way we can be persuasive. So never create an information disadvantage by pitching your idea and presenting it too quickly. Share the right information at the right time. Number one, what do they want? Number two, what's their core belief about getting it? Acknowledge that you know how they think about getting that outcome. And then, what is your logic leading to the idea? That logic bridges the gap between what they know and what you know. And also, what's your inspired twist? What is this thing that makes it wholly yours? If I were to white label whatever the idea or project is, could I identify it as you or your companies? Lastly, what will it take? What's this going to cost here? And oh, by the way, it's a green smoothie. Want to drink it? Look how much time we spend talking about why our idea should exist, not the idea itself. And make no mistake, in doing this, the goal is not to make them drink it. We're not forcing it down their throats. The real goal is to give them the information they need to decide for themselves. Because that is the only path to the real outcome we want. It's not simply them drinking it or accepting our ideas. It's them saying to us, wow, that was great. Can I have some more? Thank you.